accompanying him, hymn 376, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. Again, hymn number 376. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us continue as we pray together. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Let, O God, who on the holy mount revealed to chosen witnesses your well-beloved Son, wonderfully transfigured in radiant white and glistening, mercifully grant that we being delivered from this disquietude of this world, may by faith behold the King in his beauty, who with you, O Father, and you, O Holy Spirit, lives and reigns, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading, a reading from the book of Exodus. Moses came down from Mount Sinai. As he came down from the mountain with the two tablets of the covenant in his hand, Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone because he was talking with God. When Aaron and all the Israelites saw Moses, the skin of his face was shining and they were afraid to come near him. But Moses called them. And Aaron and all the leaders of the congregation returned to him, and Moses spoke with them. Afterward, all the Israelites came near, and he gave them in commandment all that the Lord had spoken with him on Mount Sinai. When Moses had finished speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. But whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he would take the veil off until he came out. And when he came out and told the Israelites what he had been commanded, the Israelites would see the face of Moses, and the face of his skin was shining. And Moses would put the veil on his face again until he went went in to speak with them. 
Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Psalm 99, the Lord is king, let the people tremble. The Lord is great in Zion, let them confess his name, which is great and awesome. O mighty king, lover of justice, you have established equity. Proclaim the greatness of the Lord, our God, and fall down before his footstool. Moses and Aaron among his priests, and Samuel among those who call upon his name. He spoke to them out of the pillar of the cloud. O Lord our God, you answered them indeed. Proclaim the greatness of our God and worship him upon his holy hill. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus took with him Peter and John and James and went up the mountain to pray. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly they saw two men, Moses and Elijah, talking to him. They appeared in glory and were speaking of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companions were weighed down with sleep, but since they had stayed awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with them. Just as they were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, not knowing what he said. While he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were terrified as they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my son, the chosen. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone, and they kept silent in those days, told no one any of the things that they had seen. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. So the Feast of the Transfiguration is actually on Friday the 6th, but it's one of those ones that we get to transfer, and so we thought, let's transfer it to Sunday because it's one of the the big five in Jesus's life and the turning points for Jesus's life and indeed the, the life of the church uh, following along with his baptism the crucifixion his resurrection the ascension and today the transfiguration and also in our lectionary cycle where we are in, in year B and in this this part of the summer we've been hearing the bread of life discourses as the feeding of the 5,000 and Jesus saying that indeed anyone, I am the living bread and anyone who tastes of this bread will never taste death. And a new revelation, a new transfiguration, a new change is coming. And that's very well what the, the disciples of Peter, James, and John got, got to experience today. And, and it is because when we take in that bread, when we take in that living life, however it comes to us, our experience with, with Christ it changes us and, and it, it transfigures us. So it's really good to, right in the middle of the Bread of Life discourses, to have the Feast of the Transfiguration. And of course, there's the part that all his clothes turn dazzling white, right? Even in the middle of the desert, every turn 
dazzling white and this, this tremendous mountaintop experience. But things don't always go that way. And I don't think they, they necessarily expected that that's what they were going to be experiencing when they went up on the mountaintop. And so two stories is to come to mind. One, I, I saw recently Paul McCartney was answering questions that people most ask about him on Google, right? And one of the questions was, did the Beatles ever meet Elvis? And Paul McCartney said, yes, yes, there was a time we did. You know, we idolized this guy, you know, and we got to meet Elvis. So we're almost all like, wow, what would that conversation been like, you know, to be in a room with, you know, the Beatles and Elvis at the same time? And it was funny because after all these years, what Paul McCartney remembered is that Elvis had the very first TV remote control that they had ever seen. And they thought it was amazing. Here was this guy sitting on the couch and he was changing channels and the volume, you know, with a remote control. Not the answer that, that I kind of, you know, would have thought. And so many of the things that as we enter into relationship, they never end up exactly the way that we expect them, right? And so there was another time I was uh, in New York for a year of seminary and there was this great theologian, John McCory, systematic theologian. I mean, a guy that we'd all studied about, you know, and everything read these giant volumes. We would have wished he, he wrote less, but you know, great guy. And so after we heard him speak, my friend, Allison Thomas, who is a, a priest in San Diego, she said, let's go talk to him. Like, when are we going to have the opportunity to ask him a question like this? So like, like I'll do good things in the church, it's followed by a coffee hour. So we go out, you know, and here's John McCoy, this great theologian, and he's looking for his favorite sweetener. And I forget which one it was, you know, whether it was in the pink envelope or the yellow envelope or, you know, the blue envelope. It was way before sugar in the raw, so that part wasn't in the equation yet, or honey, right? And so we ended up talking about sweetener. We were talking about coffee sweetener and sugar to one of the greatest theologians of our modern time. You know, and we kind of, we walked away and we were thinking, that's not kind of what we expected or how, you know, it was going to go. But so many times what's happening, just like the disciples in this thing, is they're entering a relationship. And we enter into relationships, we really don't have, and we can't have any preconceived notions about how that relationship is going to end up. And so these disciples, as they're thinking, yes, let, let's build three dwelling places here. Let's build, you know, three tabernacles. It's like, no, you have been able to experience something. They're, they were deeply asleep. And they woke up, and Jesus is in his full glory with Moses and Elijah. And if you take into consideration that when Moses wanted to see God, God said, I can't reveal any part to you. What I'm going to do is you turn around and hide behind the rock. Don't hit it three times. Hide behind the rock, and I'm going to go by. And after I go by, you just stand in the place and experience the place that I was and that will be enough. What a tremendous change that from just being able to stand where God was, these three people are standing right in the glory of God. What a, what a transformation, what, what, a, what a closeness in the relationship that we never knew that humanity would come that close to God again. We used to always say from the garden, every step was like one step away from God. And now with Christ, it is that the relationship is transforming, it's metamorphosizing, as, as John says in his gospel, and he uses that word, that the word became flesh, it changed, it became something else, and it became that very thing that you are in complete humanity. And we do, we have to keep such a, an open mind, because many times as we're looking for our experiences with God, you know, we think of these mountaintop experiences and that everyone's face is going to glow. It doesn't always work out. It's sometimes, and it's oftentimes, much more subtle. So here are a couple of examples of this. Uh, of just, just it, it. So I don't like a lot of stuff, right? Stuff, I try to get rid of something as, as fast as I can, right? And it's never a worry because more and more stuff always seems to appear. And so... I was driving out, it was close to trash day, maybe trash day was about three days away, and I noticed this table, this kind of beat up, 
square coffee table with a folding legs. You know that wobbles a lot and it doesn't really do much good as a table. So this table is there and I'm thinking right away, I got a table like that at church I have to get rid of too because it's just been moved from closet to closet over the last 30 years and it's time for it to go. And so I was gonna, just counting down the days to that table was gonna be gone. So I call my wife just to check in about lunchtime. How's everything going? Are you having a nice day? How's the sun doing? And she says, you wouldn't believe it. He is so excited. Somebody was giving away a free table. It had a sign on it that said free. And he was going over all the different things that he could do with this table, right? And he gets on the phone and he starts telling me, and part of this is like, well, how do I break this to him? I don't know if we have room for it. Or it's not a very good thing. I'm kind of raining on his parade. But anyway, he has this table. I ended up picking up like his favorite Chinese food. And we sit outside. It's a beautiful day. And we're gathered around this old beat up table that somebody was throwing away. And we are just having a great time. A time that I very much could have missed out on because of my con preconceived notions and my life, right? You know, and all that sort of thing. And, and we do that all the time in the church. We say, oh, those people don't worship like us, or their music is different than us, or they use a different translation of the Bible than us, you know? They raise their hands above their shoulders, you know? Whatever you want to think about, we start to, instead of embracing all the different ways that God is being seen in, in the world, we, we miss out on it so much because it's just not our thing. And it doesn't have to be our thing. But we have to acknowledge that people experience God in so many different ways, right? So another thing, on, on Wednesday night, I, I couldn't sleep. I was lying there and I, I couldn't sleep. And it was the strangest thing because I was thinking about things that I needed to do, but it's not like those things were bothering me. You know, it's like, you, now definitely there are those nights where you can't sleep and something's bothering you and you can't get it out of your head. But it had been so long but what it was is I was so excited about the things coming up. Like I was so excited about the things that are coming up at church and I was so excited about the things coming up at school and, and in my family life, I, I, I was like a little kid before Christmas or like a birthday party, you know? And it was such a wonderful thing, but yet I could have blown it off and I could have missed all that because of, of my negativity or always wanting to think it's like something else. And, and it goes like this, you know, Every chance, every time we look around, no matter who we come in contact with or who we see, it's an opportunity to see, be experienced, and, and be changed by God. And I go back to Desmond Tutu said something when they were talking about prayer. And someone says, well, you know, is it God answering your prayer or is it a coincidence? And Desmond Tutu replied that, well, when I stopped praying, coincidences stopped happening, Right? And that's where I think of like when I stop looking for God or I'm not tuned into thinking I'm going to be experiencing God or transformed in some way, I miss it. But if I take a little bit of time, that word that I, I can't even pronounce it, you know, disquieting, you know, of the world, when we get beyond that and we look for all the different ways that God expresses, how can we not be changed? And how can the church not be changed? And there's been so much talk well, how has COVID changed the church? Well, of course this time is changing the church, but the church should always be changing, right? Everything should be changing the church, everything. You don't want the same church that existed 2,000 years ago or 1,000 years ago or 500 years ago or in the 50s or in the 80s. If God is alive, the church is always transfiguring itself and metamorphosizing itself and it's growing and expanding in more ways than we can ever imagine. So let's use our imaginations. Look out there. Keep an open mind and see all the different places that God is and stay open to transformation no matter which way or shape it comes. Amen. And now let us stand and confess our faith by the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate. He crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. 
On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, for John and Diane, our bishops, for the clergy of this Church and school, and for all other bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Have compassion upon those who suffer from any grief or trouble. Give to the departed eternal rest. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Hasten, O Father, the coming of your kingdom, and grant that we, your servants, who now live by faith, may with joy behold your Son at his coming in glorious majesty, even Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. And now, remaining standing or kneeling, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. We make our confessions as we pray together. Have mercy upon us, most merciful God. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your spirit that we may live and serve you in newness of life to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand. May the peace of God be with you always. a voicemail after two rings. So 
just with me right now being the only one in the office, I might have to call you back because I just can't get to the phone that quickly. Uh, but I do, I thank it because it is those little things that make a difference and allow our community uh, to stay together and to stay communicating with each other and, and checking up on each other. So I thank everybody uh, for their patience and everyone who has you know, contributed uh, so that we, we can continue and, and gather here together, you know, um, inside the church, gather together at home, uh, send out messages and prayer requests through email, get those back, the telephone, all that sort of stuff. Uh, thank you. It's, uh, it, it, it is a blessing. So with that, let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice unto God. Wait! Change! Change is happening! We have a college blessing to do. A college bless. Come on up for your college blessing. I'm going to Montana State University in Bozeman, and then I'm be hopefully becoming, I'm going into civil engineering, so hopefully I can progress in that. All right, well, thank you, thank you.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross, and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink, of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. Please stand. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with the spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
the peace and love of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, remain with you, your family, your loved ones, on this day and always. Amen. All right. Now, you're all going to stay in here, and you're going to sing hymn 539, O Zion Haste. I'm going to excuse myself and give communion to Sunday school outside. So I'll see you on the other side. Happy singing.